Bookworms Horror Podcast is sponsored by Creepy Crate. Creepy Crate is a horror and true crime subscription box filled with spooky collectibles, macabre accessories, and terrifying goodies. Each bi-monthly box is filled with over $85 of terror and includes at least one horror or true crime book. This box delivers dread to your doorstep for just $39.99 with free shipping. Go to creepycrate.store to subscribe. Use the code bookworm5 at checkout to get $5 off your subscription. That's bookworm5 for $5 off your subscription. And now to the show. Welcome to Bookworms Horror, the podcast that offers you tips on writing, especially in the horror genre. My name is James Zipliti. I am the host of the Real Demons of Pop Culture podcast and the most recent episodes all about Frankenstein. I just fixed this episode. I launched it yesterday and I was so busy that by the time I got to review it, I was driving and I'm listening and I'm like, hey, where am I? There was entirely no James on that episode. It was just Gina having a seance or something because all you could hear was her voice answering an invisible person. It was really weird. I apologize. But here we go. The fixed episode all about fear. And you know what? I had to face my fear because that was the first thing that happened. Like, oh, my God. Everyone's going to think I suck because I did this. So I forgave myself. Hopefully you can too. Issue two of Bookworms Horror. The zine is out. It's on the Etsy link. Go check it out. It's in the show notes. Today on Bookworms Horror, I talked to Regina about fear and not writing fear, but getting over your own fear. Regina is a Wadi Award winner for Best Horror Novel, as well as multiple screenwriting awards, including a Webby honoree. Regina is also the contributing editor of the best-selling Local Haunts, a horror tube anthology. Find Regina and her alter ego, Batilda, at her booktube channel, Regina's Haunted Library, and on her blog, rstclair.com. Regina and myself are the editors of the Bookworms Horror Zine, and since we're seeking great horror fiction for bookworms, we created this weekly podcast to offer writers quick tips on writing for the genre. Find all our links in the show notes. Now let's jump into my conversation with Regina as she speaks with me from her haunted library. (laughs) All right, this week we're going to talk about fear. And when I'm talking about fear, I'm talking, Regina, uh, you're sitting down at your typewriter or word processor and you have staring at a blank page and you're about to create something, and the fear is there of, uh, let's say, you don't know what you might write, you don't know what the next line's going to be, you're afraid that maybe this is a bad idea, you're afraid that no one's going to like it, there's going to be critical, you know, bad Mm -hmm. reviews. How do you deal, because I believe everything is fear, like, the reason why we don't do things is based in fear. A lot of times, sure. And so, you've managed to finish books and you had to have fought that fear and did it anyway. So what do you have strategies you use? Yes. I think that my strategy for doing that has been like a lifelong uh, confrontation of that fear, uh, fear of creativity. I mean, going back to when I became first self-conscious about it. So when When you're a child, you're creative. Most kids are just naturally creative. Uh, You're you're not thinking about creating a product. Like, for example, one thing that we used to do growing up is uh, always put on plays in the backyard. And and then as I got into school and high school, I started, I was involved in the drama club and it was really just for fun. And it wasn't until I got into college and was a theater major that the fear started because now I there was I had an expectation um, on myself that I had to make a career out of this and then the fear was I'm not good enough you know basically that was the fear I I'm wasting my money and this kind of thing you didn't have any issues like in like middle school age because that's a lot of times where this stuff starts to appear well I didn't do drama 
at I was very shy during the middle school years. I mm-hmm. would I was doing more um, writing. I was writing then more introverted things. Uh, I was into f- fine arts, drawing, writing. I wrote a lot of poetry. I would write poetry anonymously. I was going to say, did you share your work with anyone back then? Well, I'll tell you a story real quick when I was, and I'm a little embarrassed by the story, but hell, it was a long time ago. <laughs> when I was about, uh, I guess, four, 13, 14, what, what, what age are you when you're like in eighth grade? Um, yeah, 13, 12. 13, yeah, probably 13 going yeah, it was on 14. More like, yeah, it was more of that because it was middle school. Yeah. And we had to do a poetry con- a, a poetry unit in my English class. And and we had to put together like a book of poems. And, and they didn't have to be poems that we wrote. They could be poems that we found in different places. And, and then you could illustrate them or have some kind of uh, collage or something to go with it. So I did mine and I illustrated it because I was very into drawing and art, which I still love to do. And I wrote probably the majority of the poems in the book, but I didn't put my name to them. Mm. I just wrote like anonymous. And then when the teacher got it, and I wasn't the best student, believe me. I, I only excelled in, in creativity at that time. I, I was horrible at math and science. And I, oh, I, I thought maybe you were a troublemaker. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> no. When I got to high school, I started, you know, being a little more mischievous that way. But when it came time for those to, you know, put hand in our projects, I not only got like an A plus on my project, but the teacher brought, you know, presented it to the class as an example of excellent work. Oh, nice. Yes, but I never took ownership of those poems. Well, did the, the teacher knew? No. No. Oh, so she's... And so you didn't even, like, say that, walk up later to the teacher and, and announce that that was no, yours? No, that it would have been like a victory lap if I had stood in front of the class and said, well, I wrote all those poems, but I was so shy and so afraid. Of right, ridic- this is all ridic- fear-based. It is all fear-based, and uh, and I think getting into drama was a way of overcoming that fear by pretending to be someone else, <laughs> which isn't always yeah. the best strategy. But so I have been working on that is this issue my entire life, and I guess I don't care. I'm I've done it so much that I'm not saying I don't feel it, but I I push through it. Sometimes I will. Like I have, I've come up with some crazy ideas for, for writing projects and some I've discussed with you that I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I, I don't know why I want to do this. It's, I, I have to, like, I'll just tell you real quick. I was considering doing a, a Wattpad story uh-huh. and I, and it would be kind of like a fan fiction type of thing based on real people. But I, I was wrestling with like, should I put it on my own page and risk the ridicule or, or the, uh, not even the ridicule, the, the, the shaming that might come from this, or do I start like an anonymous, what, like I, I, I'm still thinking about this stuff now is my point. So uh, it's interesting because I do believe a lot of authors, and I'm talking about who later became famous, they start with a different name mm -hmm. out of that fear that well, if this sucks, I can at least go and try again with my real n- or my other yeah, name. I can you know, pretend like, I never, I have yeah. no idea what it is. Richard I, Bachman, I, you know, like. Right. But there's freedom in that. There's freedom yeah. in hiding behind an identity. Exactly. So I think there are different ways of, of confronting fear. So you're still dealing with it, but it sounds like you just kind of make the decision and say, F it. I'm just going to do it anyway. Yes, and I actually think you sh- you should. What did Anne Rice say? Right, right where the pain is. I think also right where the fear is, or do any creativity where that fear is, is actually a good good advice. How because, vulnerable you know, do you think you you get when you're writing? Do you go really deep and feel like oh my god, like can't believe I'm writing this and people will read it. (laughs) Um, no, because I, and this might be a a cop out. I always kind of default into camp and that protects me. Like I'll start to laugh at it. Like when I wrote, uh, unmasked, 
which is pretty obviously based on the and my predictions have kind of come true with her yeah. whole plastic surgery thing and everything. Um, not that I take any delight in that. I think there's, there's something very tragic about it. But I, I knew I was going into camp, but I love it. You know, so I think there is a kind of a safety in that or, or going over the top where, where it becomes ridiculous and you do have to laugh at a little bit. I don't think I've ever written something where or that I, pu- I may have written something, but I've never published something where I'm like, well, you know what? That's not true because I wrote and I put it on my Facebook page and it's on my blog. I wrote a very vulnerable poem and uh, I felt and when I wrote this, it was, it was, I think it was the day before I turned 60. So it was already feeling a little bit like shaky about that. Yeah. And, uh, I was gardening in my backyard and I accidentally killed a bird with my rake. <gasps> I know. And oh my I, God. and it was with horrible. A rake? Yes. With a rake. The, it was like a bait, like a little, it wasn't a baby. It, oh. I don't, I don't want to gross you out. Cause I also have a, I have a phobia about dead birds. And I picked up the bird, and I, it died in my hand, and I watched oh it die. Oh, my God. This is such a depressing story. I'm sorry. But I wrote a poem about that, and it's, uh, um, it, you know, it's on my, it's on my uh, blog. And when I posted it, I felt very vulnerable when I wrote it. And, I mean, I cried. I cried. I probably cried the entire day. And uh, it was, of course, very symbolic. And I was like, oh, my God, this is a death symbol. Ironically, I just had a dream the other night where a, I picked up a bird and it, like, came out of a shell. It, it You know, it, it came out of its shell in my hand and flew away, which in some ways is, like, full circle. But, yeah, yeah. That, so I, I do write. I think the, the vulnerability for me comes out in my poetry more than anything else. Anyway, I'm, I'm rambling. No, I, I haven't talked to you for a while, so I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> what about fear of rejection? Now, this is a little different. You self-publish. Do you still get a fear of rejection? And I guess that would come in a different form. Well, I still have submitted sh- short stories and novel drafts to. I haven't done it for a while. I'm in my last. What it, I think it was Code Red did mm-hmm. get had some interest from a small press. I won't name who they are, and I, I have no uh, issue towards this <laughs> these people. But it did get through, I think, a couple passes, and then it ultimately was rejected. And, yeah, you always kind of wonder, why? You know, why did they reject my story and publish this other th- story? I don't know. I don't really have a fear about that, though. I I know enough to know that it's nothing to be afraid of. Since publishing Bookworms and also publishing the anthologies, I see the other side of that. And I know not to take it personally, because it really isn't. It's very subjective. What do you mean the other side of that? Expand on that. Like, I have been in the position of accepting or rejecting stories. I see what you're saying, yeah. And it's not personal, and it just might be that I just particularly liked this story where someone else wouldn't or they would like another story. Exactly. And so, and as, with Bookworms is a great example because, I mean, you just really don't have the space to accept everything you like. Uh-uh. So it's not necessarily that you got rejected because... The story it, was bad. Right. There's so many other reasons. So many other reasons. And it just might click to me on that day. And yeah, that and could it, be the only reason. What's really nice is Bookworms issue two, which if you haven't purchased it yet, you can get it on the Etsy link, which is in the show notes, is getting really great feedback. Yes, it is. And I'm really excited for that. And um, people are just loving it. And I'm excited. We have to get together to talk about the Halloween issue. I know. Um, I'm excited about that. Super excited about that. But I think that if you are considering submitting, but you're afraid, don't be. Send it. And this is a great way to Just practice. Just make sure you mail it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and you can find all that information out. Send it in. And it's a great way to practice, like, 
getting used to. I don't want to like make you feel bad, but you, but you're, you might get, you know, good chance since we don't take that many that you probably will get rejected because we just don't have the space. But it's a good way of getting that response and being like, okay, I, I did it. Because if you've never done it, the fear is going to just grow and grow and grow until yes. you just give up. So don't give up. No, Send don't it give, in. Ne never give up. Never surrender. Never surrender. And also, I, I'm, I know that uh, our, and maybe we could be a little more specific going forward, but I know for the Halloween issue, having like a Halloween theme and being 1,500 words or less will help you. Yes. At the top of the uh, slush pile, because it's amazing how I'll put in the description we're looking for 1,500 words or less, and I get stories emailed to me that are 3,000 words, and it's like, you didn't read the... I mean, I don't yeah. mean to be an asshole about no, it, you're but not, you but know yeah. what I mean? When like, submitting, and this is not just for bookworms, this is no. any any time you want to submit something, read exactly what it says and put exactly what they want in the submission uh there's a reason it's 1500 words and it's because of you know how much it may cost and also space so like yes. you can't be like thinking well my story's so good they're gonna pick it and we can't fit it it just that's the bottom line so follow the rules also and that's going to if you ever get these books that tell you what people want and they have all the submissions if they want fantasy they want fantasy Exactly. We want horror. We want horror. We don't want uh, science fiction. And I love science fiction. But that's, so do I. that's not what this book is about. Right. So that's it for Fear this week. Next week, we'll be back, and we're going to be talking about your inner critic. Thank you for tuning in to the Bookworms Horror Podcast. All our links are in the show notes. We'll be back next week with a new episode. Bookworms is a Gorilla Delphia production. Yeah!